WBCB presents Pro Wrestling Weekly. The longest running pro wrestling radio talk show in the history of terrestrial radio. And he's obviously Michael Cole. Call in with a question or comment at 215-949-3232 or 888-922-2149. Talking wrestling. Yeah. Because that's what this show is about. That's what we've been doing for over 16 no, no, years. No, 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 It's about sports entertainment. And now here are your hosts of Pro Wrestling Weekly. Ferran Derry and Lucas DeSangro. Will you stop marking out over there? Sorry. Move over, kid. I'm taking your microphone. You're shallow. You know that? <laughs> I'm running on two hours of sleep. I don't remember what the hell I do anymore. There's the sound of the bell, and we are set to go. This is Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. A special Pro Wrestling Weekly. Not quite a very special Pro Wrestling Weekly, but we'll see. Alongside Mitch and Twitch. So it's a Mitch and Twitch double wombo combo. Ugh. I gotta note that. We're keeping that one. No, no, no. <laughs> No, you've already kept too many changes while I was gone. Okay. Well, no, I meant I meant the the quote, the the, the, the drop. It's a, it's a that's exactly what I meant to not keep. <laughs> or the ugh. Well, I mean, that there's included? there's a there's a plethora of those, as Lex Luger would say. Yeah, he said. No! Pl- <laughs> he said plethora. Yeah, I know the t-shirts are too tight. <laughs> so yes, happy New Year, happy 2019. Although it wasn't exactly very happy. Come the 2nd of January, as we got some unfortunate news uh, about somebody that, well, we've heard a lot of things about that, over the that, years. and That's touched many hearts in many generations, including mine. Most certainly. And usually it comes from some sort of phraseology like this. Me, Gene, the first thing you need to do is to tell these people to shut up if you want to hear what I got to say. Well, you know something, Mean Gene. Well, you know you're exactly right, Mean Gene. Well, you know, Mean Gene, I like getting on an Oakland, California, man. Well, you know, Mean Gene, I want to apologize. I'm going to tell you something, Mean Gene. Well, you know, Mean Gene, you get right to the heart of the matter. Well, you know something, Mean Gene. Well, you know something, Mean Gene. You know something, Mean Gene. Well, let me tell you something, Mean Gene. How did AJ Styles get in there? I've always wanted to do that. I'm, I'm sorry. Because he's always yes, wanted yes. to do that. Yeah, exactly. I, I what I I didn't hear this the first time I heard uh, AJ Styles do that was someone just off off uh, I guess off mic slightly. Just go like, oh please. <laughs> yes, that, that <laughs> which, less, that, which would be you, and that, I would be AJ. In that's the only scenario where I would ever be AJ Styles in anything. <laughs> Damn right about that. Okay. Wow. Settle down. Do I just. Wholeheartedly agreeing. That's all, but no that that clip of uh, that last clip AJ Styles from Raw 25, uh, just a little less than a year ago. But yes, unfortunately, Eugene Arthur Okerlund, better known in the professional wrestling world as interview and announcer Mean Gene Okerlund, died at the age of 76 this past Wednesday. Now, Gene had a legendary career spanning five decades in professional wrestling between the Minnesota-based American Wrestling Association, the AWA the World Wrestling Federation and eventual WWE, and also in World Championship Wrestling. Yes. And uh, I specifically remember a certain thing when I used to watch um, on the WWE Classics, which is where I got my extensive background wrestling knowledge before I met you, Ferran Derry, uh, was he, he and Dr. Death Steve Williams. At, I think it was like a spring break house or like a frat party. Okay. That was just a clip from Nitro, and I thought... You seem very out of place, Gene Oakland, but you're a good egg and you're a company guy, and I'm sure you just went where they told you to go. Good for you. That's usually how these things go. But yeah, over the course of the hour, we'll be airing classic interviews, bloopers, and moments in memory of Mean Gene, along with reactions from the wrestling world. Yes. Uh, uh, wh- oh, go ahead. Can I just... What I loved about Mean Gene was uh, he gave zero hex. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Uh he wasn't afraid to call someone out on their nonsense, which is... But I can was, relate to on this yes, show. But, but it wasn't in the sense of trying to get himself over as much as it was trying to point out, like trying to almost uh, help point out that, oh, this guy's a bad guy. You know what I mean? Or he would just make things more interesting. And I think that more people need to do that. More people, too many people are trying to be Bobby Heenan. Not enough people are trying to be Mean Gene. Uh, less, uh, 
I don't know. There, there are too few John Stocktons and not enough, or and too many Carl Malones. You know, the, the the people who set up the the point guards. Yes. Wow. Basketball is my least favorite sport, and I'm making a basketball reference. But that's also because you're a darn professional. I yeah. I guess if I can make an analogy and it works, let's uh, let's yeah. roll with it. I barely. You know what the thing is? I can't tell you a thing about current basketball. I understood the John Stockton reference, and I don't even. I didn't even care about basketball from that era. But you, you know, probably what? couldn't even tell me what team he played for. Utah Jazz. <clears throat> wow, way to prove you were me saying? wrong. Yeah, thank you. All right. It's because Sports Center. Prove is... me wrong. I did. Yeah. Well, Ben Wather. <laughs> I think he proved other people wrong in a sense. Canadians are anyway. Nice. Okay. Moving on. Okay. Uh, so yes, Hulk Hogan had uh, had put out a tweak as you know. You heard most of those uh, most of those clips there of the well, you know something. I mean, that's where that iconic quote came from was the numerous times in various variations that it was utilized by Hulk Hogan. But he tweeted out the best partner I ever had. We never rehearsed or did anything scripted from a writer. Gene would ask me, "Hey, big man, what do you want to do?" I would always answer, "Just follow you, brother." And it worked from 1980 to 2017. Rest in peace, my brother. Finer words. Uh, I mean, there, there are a lot of fine words were, here. I was going to say, were you about to say finer wo- words could have been spoken? Because <laughs> in Hulk Hogan's case, maybe. <laughs> well, we'll see if he does that this coming Monday, as WWE had announced yesterday, that uh, Hogan is going to appear on this Monday's Raw to host a tribute to Mean Gene Okerlund, which... Is a twofold game for WWE as it helps them look good doing the tribute, but it also brings Hulk Hogan in front of a United States crowd in a safe way as it'll be the first time he'll be addressing the U.S. crowd in a WWE environment since being blackballed after his uh, racist statements from a few years ago became public. So this will it'll be one of those things where even if people don't like the fact that Hogan's back, they can't boo him and theoretically probably- disrespect mean gene okerlund uh do you but at the same time do you think wrestling fans care about whether or not they, they if they want to boo Ho- hogan they will boo hogan i i think that the in modern this case, wrestling fan will i i think I, I think that the respect for mean gene will overshadow the dislike for wwe's bringing hogan back yeah but at the same time okay so if wrestling fans are all sort of feel like the if wrestling fans feel as if they're smartened up, which I'm not saying that WWE is trying to do this to benefit Hogan as well as I think it's just to pay tribute to Mean Gene. But if wrestling fans think that they're trying to that they're trying to be force fed something, they'll try and shut it down because sometimes wrestling fans can stink. Yep, just giving enough room on that for the clip. And speaking of clips, well, there's. One that I think, for better or worse, Mean Gene is famously or infamously known for. And I I think it's a good place to start as we go back to uh, one of the more infamous bloopers in professional wrestling history from SummerSlam of 1989. And it was something that wasn't even... It wasn't even his fault, really. It was somebody, whoever was putting the tape together, the editing for a pre-recorded interview with... Bobby the Brain Heenan and Ravishing Rick Rude prior to the Intercontinental title match uh, between Rude and the Ultimate Warrior. Well, the uh, I guess they had an outtake queued up as opposed to the actual take, which was later spliced in for the VHS tapes. But, and uh, Botchamania. And, yes. But, well, here it is uh, from that live broadcast back in 1989. Uh, yeah, here we go. Standing by now, Gene Okerlund. With Ravishing Rick Rude and Bobby the Brain Heenan. Gentlemen, as you know, the ultimate warrior. Nice move. F- it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jess, I tell you what, we have some tremendous events still to come, including that intercontinental matchup <laughs> right here during summer. <laughs> Damage control. A lot of awkward silence. I don't, I don't know what happened to that Gene Okerlund back there, but somebody's chasing him down. I like that. It's about time that bald-headed old man got somebody to interrupt him and cause him trouble. All he does is cause trouble himself. In- including just like the shadow government, McMahon, I was hoping that the Pinkertons would be chasing him down. Because everything with Jesse Ventura for me always has to go back to conspiracy theories. It's just... 
I'm, I'm you were chomping at the bit. Oh, to get you that know in. it. Well, I was I was leading into the microphone, waiting for that clip to end. I was so waiting. I was like I was like Randy Orton when he's getting ready for the punt kick, where he'd like be in the corner. He's just like rocking, leaning, back and forth. rocking back on the fourth on the ropes. <laughs> Good on you. Uh. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, a little bit later in the uh, in the hour, actually, it turns out that years later that there was a little bit more to that clip that was released that they had muted when they realized that, uh-oh, we put the wrong part of the tape in. <laughs> so that, that outtake had a little bit more to it, and we've got that here for you a little bit later in the hour. <sighs> oh, I want it now. <laughs> Veruca, sweetheart. No, uh, yeah, for the Willy Wonka fans out there. <laughs> Yeah, good. Okay. There, there are a few. Oh, I. Oh, yeah, yeah. they're there. Absolutely, but I mean, it, Mean Gene, his interactions with different wrestlers Verluca over the years. Salt. Verluca Salt. Verluca Salt. Ah, there you go. Uh, we're certainly classic, and there, there have been a lot of interesting things. I mean, going all the way back even to, well, let's go back to 1984, and this classic clip that not many people may have necessarily heard between Mean Gene and the Hot Rod. Rowdy Roddy Piper. All right, fans, my guest at this time is the very controversial host of Piper's Pit. He is from Glasgow, Scotland. His name, Howard, just a second. How could you hand me that chair? Roddy Piper, I kind of appreciate the way that, uh, that you do business on Piper's Pit. Well, and I thought... Uh, well, let me grab a chair of my own here. Well, sure, we'll sit down. Thank you. So they're doing Thank a you. seated hey, interview. Don't kill a good thing here, Howard. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, yeah. I just thought I'd come around, say hi, and see if you had anything on your mind for a change. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I do. But you know what I'm going to do? Right. I'm going to be a nice guy. I'm not going to insult you. Who's this? Junkyard dog. <laughs> Drap. <laughs> You're not going to insult me. Okay, then see you know, that nice... Roddy, oh, yes. I'd like to have you... Tell me about Glasgow. I, I, I hear so many good things about Glasgow, Scotland. Uh, okay, I'll tell you about Glasgow. They have filthy rivers. They have nasty, nasty countryside. They have horrible, horrible people. That's why I left. <laughs> now tell me, tell me about Poland. <laughs> well, what, what would you like to know about Poland? Uh, why did you leave? Well, I... Uh, uh, let's forget that, forget that. I'm going to ask okay. you, this, this is not Piper's Pit. No, no I'm the I'm genius. the host of this. You know, one, one thing, though, that I, I would like to discuss with you is maybe a sore subject. Is a gentleman uh, by the name of... I've been, I know Hot Rod's been tired lately. Go ahead, though. I don't Mr. mind. Mr. Wonderful, Mr. Uh, Wonderful, yeah. Paul Orndorff. Oh, Mr. Wonderful. Uh, all of a sudden, oh. now I get a rise out of you. Oh. After we talked about oh. you, now, now, now I get a rise hard. out of you. It's hard to get a rise from me. Mr. Wonderful. I've heard. Mr. Wonderful, you heard it. He's wonderful. Uh, you've been talking to the apes and the giraffes and chimpanzees again, haven't you? Mr. Wonderful, I think to myself, sometimes late at night, I'll lay back in my bed. I'll close my eyes. He won't even cross my mind. <laughs> Not a damn thing about him. The other day, though, I was in a store. People were talking. Never mentioned his name. Are you starting to lose your hair? Am I what? <laughs> well, I see you've got a little, little, little receding hairline. Uh, there. You'd be an expert at it, wouldn't you? <laughs> I mean, you would know if someone was starting to lose their hair, wouldn't you? Tell me something. Did you start to lose your hair on the top of your head all over? Uh, yes, well, I, uh, at, at, at not, not actually <laughs> no, all over. Not, all, not actually all over? No, no that, just on the top of my head. Just on the top of your head. That just comes with time. Now, Orndorff, he's got lots of hair. If you're looking at him from the north end going south, he's got plenty of hair. Nice hair down his back. Along his Excuse me, pal. Hi. She's all over. She's history. Yeah. Stick a fork in you right now because we're done. I don't Thank call you. me that, right? Thank you. Thank you. Gotta love the music from the time too. It was acceptable in yeah, the eighties. Yeah, it was. It was definitely acceptable in the eighties. There was a lot that was uh, that was acceptable. That uh, I don't know if it is now, but we got it out there anyway. So I think we're gonna Can take we say care. That? We just did. Oh, it, all right then, Doc. Pretty much. Well, Ted hasn't come running in here, so I think we're okay for the moment. Is Ted here? Yes. Uh, well, he's got he's got country roads coming up in, uh, in yes, forty he's, minutes. I'm sorry, he's in his office. I I it's just. It's, it just feels empty when you're not graced by the presence of Teddy Fall. We love Ted. Well, he's, he's, getting, he's, got, he's got the Country Roads coming up. He's got Take the me Country home. Roads Memory Spotlight. Razzie Bailey coming up. One o'clock. Stay tuned for that. But we've got more coming up here in the 
lifetimes in memory of Mean Gene Okerlund, including a lot more laughs, which I wanted to mute our microphones on that last bit because I knew that there were a few times that Lucas had a a, a a shocked look. A a Triple H and Shawn Michaels being called degenerates Spit take, look. Yeah, it was us <laughs> them being called degenerates look though. Ooh. So we've got that. We've got. Uh, I just realized I tried to make that face, and we're on radio. That's. Yeah, I, that's I, uh, yeah. A, a picture's worth a thousand words, and in this case, the currency exchange rate doesn't quite work out so well. Yeah. Well played. All right, so we're going to take care of a little bit of business, but first, I want to let you know that the place to get action figures, replica title belts, sports memorabilia, banners, and more is at George's Cards and Collectibles, where the first signing of 2019 is on tap, and it's one week from today, next Saturday, January 12th, at the Neshaminy Mall location, former WWE star Summer Ray will be at George's from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. So head on over, get an autograph, get a photo, Put on WBCB in the car on the way out. You're good to go. You can hear, you'll catch a little of the tail end of the Denny O. Polka show, and then you'll catch the first half hour of Pro Wrestling Weekly in the time that she's there. Hmm. Brilliant plan. Mm, yes. Now, George's has two locations for all of your cards and collectibles needs. Their original store at 7755 New Falls Road in Levittown, and in the Neshaminy Mall in the movie theater wing. For more information, go to georgescollectibles.com and follow George's Cards and Collectibles on Facebook. Coming back more with the life and times of Mean Gene Okerlund, and also Ed from Northeast Philly and a whole bunch more here on Pro Wrestling Weekly on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Hi, this is Dr. Lee Piccarello inviting you to tune in every Friday morning at 8 a.m. to The Head Game, a must-listen show for athletes and coaches of all levels and ages. Mindful Athlete Training in Newtown, Pennsylvania is a mental circuit training program that prepares the athletes to perform at the highest level of today's game. Athletes get into the zone faster and stay there longer. Tune in every Friday morning at 8 a.m. right here on WBCB, 1490 a.m. and throughout the world at WBCB1490.com. Chickies and Pete's, proud partner of the Philadelphia Eagles and your favorite local sports bar, has you covered this weekend for football playoffs. The Eagles showdown with the Bears. The home crowd will be at Chickies and Pete's for the definitive game-watching experience. Catch all the action like nowhere else and enjoy ice-cold draft and craft beer and all your Chickies food favorites. Chickies and Pete's, official caterer of the Philadelphia Eagles Touchdown Club. Click chickiesandpeats.com for locations and details. All commentators heard on WBCB express their own views. Their opinions are not necessarily those of others on WBCB, including the staff and management. You won't see termites crawling across your floor, but thousands might be devouring the wood in your walls, weakening the structure of your home. For over 50 years, termite proofing and pest control of the Delaware Valley has been in the exterminating business. If you think you have a pest problem, they're the experts. Call them today at 215-639-5455. That's 215-639-5455 for TPPC. Termite proofing and pest control of the Delaware Valley gives your home or business peace of mind, knowing your pest problem is in their hands. Located at 1560 Bristol Pike in Ben Salem, they use only EPA-approved material applied by licensed technicians. Call Termite Proofing and Pest Control of the Delaware Valley at 215-639-5455. Schedule a retirement planning strategy session with TFG Wealth Management. Mark Freed previews his technology others don't have access to and methods other professionals don't consider. Mark's maximum planning process takes you to and through a successful retirement. Call 866 866- 296-8156. Mark Freed at TFG Wealth Management. That's 866-296-8156. Investment advisory services are offered by TFG Wealth Management, LLC, a registered investment advisory firm in the state of Pennsylvania. Insurance products and services are offered through the Freed Group. TFG Wealth Management, LLC and the Freed Group are affiliated companies. See, he's oh, got man. the Luigi death stare from Ferran, so he might have to I didn't give you the Luigi death stare. That's Shh, not true. You're breaking cave <laughs> Breaking cave <K-Fabe. laughs> Gonna break something else during this commercial. There we All go. Right. That's what I like to see. And now, more Pro Wrestling Weekly with your hosts, Ferran Derry and Lucas DeSangro. Are so we right. getting into that controversy again? <laughs> Ugh, I know how it feels, and it's not fun. 
Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. For Ron Derry alongside Twitch and Mitch. This, the- that could be such a morning zoo talk show name. Twitch and Mitch. In the mornings on... 1490 WBCB. Uh, no, no, no. Jim uh, Foxwell's not going anywhere. Wow, doodle. Doodle wow. <laughs> and... Bone dry. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, so Ferran and Mitch. No. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't take much. So Vince McMahon, he, uh, he had put out on Twitter regarding Mean Gene Okerlund as that's who we're paying tribute to as he had passed away this past Wednesday. He said, It was impossible not to crack a smile whenever Mean Gene Okerlund entered a room. He was the voice behind so many of WWE's most iconic and entertaining moments, and the WWE family will miss him immensely. Indeed. And one other Twitter tribute, and one that I know that you're heavily anticipating, the legendary heel wrestler, the Iron Sheik. Yeah, Sheiky, Sheiky baby. baby. So his, his That's how I found out. There was like, he. I have notifications, because usually his mm-hmm. tweets brighten, brighten my day. Right not up. that day. Nope. He said, Gene Meme was best man at my wedding. We do, he sing, he dance, he was always there for me. Always leading the way at the bar with the legend. God bless him. Mean in all caps. Mean Gene. Mean I love you forever. And that's when you know. Mm-hmm. Oh no, is he dead? Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, it's it's been a bad uh, bad juju here. But we've been trying to keep things light and remember some of the positive times, as there have been uh, a few of those here, including this with the Nature Boy Ric Flair, as he. Well, he had more than his fair share of moments with uh, with Mean Gene, including this one from WCW, and uh, having a little bit of fun at the expense of one Easy E, Eric Bischoff. Mean Gene. Bischoff used to say to me, "Don't go out there and go Mean Gene anymore. I'm tired of hearing it." So Bischoff, this is for you, Mean. stuck it to him. Nice little addition there from Gino. Well, you stuck it to him, <laughs> as he was known to do. And then, well, another moment that involved Flair, but in this case, uh, a very proactive, for lack of a better term, Gene Okerlund. This is from the 1992 Royal Rumble. Mm. Rick Woo! Flair, you have made world... Put that cigarette out. You have made World Wrestling Federation history here tonight. See? It's the greatest moment See? of my life. Oh, no, man. Just just out of nowhere, just, yeah, in the middle of the thing, just put that cigarette out. He would call people on their nonsense. I can only imagine what Mean Gene would have to say if he were here. Put that twitchy kid out. <laughs> put that twitcherette out. There we go. Uh, twitcherette? You know, like cigarette, but because I'm... Yeah. It, they're not all gems, all right? Most of them aren't gems with me. And there's another drop. Indeed. Let's take a, a bit of a pause here to let Lucas recover for the next uh, potential gem. <laughs> and let's Don't go to hold your f- breath, you'll suffocate. Duly noted. Uh, let's go to the phones and take a look at the local scene courtesy of Ed from Northeast Philly. Ed, welcome to Pro Wrestling Weekly. Uh, good afternoon. So far, one letting down. Well, let's hope I, that there's not more to go. Like, no, no, I mean, no, it's, that's uh, not what I meant. <laughs> that's not what I meant. Way to brighten the mood. <laughs> I stuck my foot in my mouth that time. <laughs> oh, you're taking my spot now, too? Wow, there's... <laughs> over the mouth. phones, next to me. Wow, I'm just <laughs> being replaced. Foot in the mouth. <laughs> it's all right, Ed. <laughs> what else do you got for us here? Um... I think you did this right before the New Year's show about um, the pay-per-view scheduling. Um, as far as for 2019? Yeah. 
Uh, I know we we dabbled with it a little bit. It, it hasn't been completely set in stone. There are some major events later in the year, you know, SummerSlam, Survivor Series, that are already set. Otherwise, January through WrestleMania is pretty well set, but that's that's as much as we've gotten for the moment. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, usually they have more listed, but they the way they leaked it out last year... I think that may have had something yeah, to do yeah. with it, but we'll 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 get more into yeah, that next yeah, week. There's uh, anyway. That's a shame about me, Gene. I, I know it's 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 right in the feels. I mean, yeah. the last time I felt this way was when Randy Savage had passed, yeah. and he was my all-time favorite. I mean, that's just uh, yeah. I mean, he, he's so instrumental. I mean, and it's kind of hard to put him in an all-time favorite wrestler category because he wasn't a wrestler save for those couple of matches personality and, though but yeah as far as personalities he is up there i mean it's it's uh, him gorilla monsoon uh, uh, bobby the brain heenan uh, and, and that's by no means in any order it's just you know just uh, off the top dusty of my rose. head well i mean dusty Rhodes is a wrestler so i mean we're, we're just uh, i mean per, yeah person uh, non-wrestling personalities in professional wrestling do two matchups i think yeah, he had a couple in WCW, and he had one infamous one in 1984. It was Okerlund and Hulk Hogan against Mr. Fuji and George the Animal Steel. And then he did that parody, uh, Low Richards. Uh, yeah, they're... they're <laughs> I forget the song offhand. Yeah, I mean, they had a lot of different things. Uh, he was on the wrestling album, too. Yeah, yeah, there, there's... Uh, Certainly a lot with, uh, with, with Mean Gene. Uh, did they say what he died from? Well, there have been okay, things right. that have been leaked and whispered out. Uh, I, I, I mean, it was revealed by his son, Todd Okerlund, that, uh, that he had recently received, uh, well, over the course of the last couple of years, three different kidney transplants and had recently suffered a fall which caused his health to deteriorate in the weeks leading up to his death. So, as far as an official cause, there hasn't really been anything yeah. determined as of yet, but uh, they, they believe that, that the, the complications of the, uh, of the fall is what, uh, what, what caused the death. Uh, he looked good back in Georgia a couple of weeks ago. And, and I think that's, that's what kind of throws people off. I mean, he yeah. was just at Georgia's Cards and Collectibles a few weeks ago, and seemed all right so it, it yeah. just it, it i mean that's unfortunately with an advanced age i mean yeah. the health can take a swift turn for the worse and i mean next thing you know i mean it, i mean something like this can happen and i almost interviewed him at that convention back in january of last year yeah and i i, I did have the uh the chance to briefly meet him yeah. uh, a couple of years ago and uh i mean just just a great personality. I mean, the the irony of him being nicknamed Mean Gene is yeah. that throughout professional wrestling, he has been known as an absolute sweetheart. Yeah, the, the, the one of the nicest people in professional wrestling. And I mean, some of the uh, some of the, the the different tweets and everything here uh, definitely contribute to that. Uh, looking here from Jerry Lawler, so here, so sad to hear the passing of our friend Mean Gene Okerlund. I'll always remember Gene with a smile on his face and a drink in his hand, and always wanting to help. His was the voice of WWE. Huh, sounds like me, a smile on my face, a drink in hand, and always wanting to help. Indeed, and following in good company. Yes. Mm -hmm. Though you are actually are a little bit mean at times to me. Whether or not it's warranted, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll. we'll leave that for the fans to decide. And a smattering of posts going, no, it's 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 deserved. Okay. <laughs> How was Capital Wrestling, Twitch? <laughs> it was quite fun. Thank you for asking. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I got to run into some faces that I usually see at the Monster Factory, but uh, yeah. really good show all around, and uh, I'm looking forward to going back in February. I thought I'd see March the next one. No, the next one's on uh, February. Uh, it's it's Watch Your Step, which is uh, it's going to be a doozy because it's sort uh, of the the name is uh, in reference to Groundhog Day. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, watch Your Step. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, no, Twitch, don't you, trip. no, you're not. Don't you're trip. Not kidding. It's fine. I get it. And 
No, uh, 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 all kidding aside, no. Twitch is very uh, fleet of foot. I have my moments. I couldn't say that with a straight face. I'm sorry. Nah, I know. Well, yeah, obviously. I see what you did there. What? Yeah, because it's you, you, uh -huh. it's hard for you to say something <laughs> nice about me without you laughing. Mm-hmm. Snap, snap, wink, wink, touch, touch, and I know more. Alrighty. Yeah. <laughs> We're in a we're in a we're in a mood here today. It, it's a, we're we're trying to keep things light given it's a bad situation here. We've got uh, some more clips of uh, of, yeah, of Mean I Gene coming up here. Else about the local scene. Yeah, no worries. Well, I mean, we appreciate your thoughts mean on Gene. on Mean Gene. Yeah, like it's it's little... kind of a, a yeah, it kind of overshadows everything here yeah. this week and very understandable. Uh, I mean, it, he's one of those iconic figures that even if you aren't familiar with professional wrestling you've seen him you you've heard of him you know all those interviews with hulk hogan he was the guy that was right there it's like oh that's the guy that was interviewing hulk oh he's the well you know something mean gene guy <laughs> from a from a more broad spectrum yeah. i mean he, he even was among the litany of people who appeared on the a-team back in the day Oh my goodness, you're yeah. right. Yeah, Ogerlin was on the A-team. He doesn't get on no darn planes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, thank you so much right. for the call. We'll catch up next week, and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have things uh, ideally a little bit brighter here. But to, actually, yeah, to, to, to attempt to brighten things up here, and I should have spread these out a little bit more often here or a little bit more fervently throughout the show, but we're going to go back to WCW and this classic, uh, back and forth between Mean Gene Okerlund and one Macho Man Randy Savage. Ooh, Ooh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Randy Savage, I know you Your are. Your mustache is crooked. Your beard is a little sideways, too, but I don't want to get into that. That's I'm not right. going to take personal pot shots at you or anybody else. That's not my nature. Get in line, everybody. I'm a little better me. guy than that. I don't mind telling you. Cool. I'm man. a bigger man. Cool. Well, how did we get into this? That's okay, man. You okay over there, Twitch? <laughs> right off the bat, your mustache is crooked. Yeah, well, your beard's a little sideways. Oh, my Lord. Randy Just Savage, not eat your heart out. Stride. Just whopper. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, th this is something that's been going on for years. I mean, let's go back to... Uh, let's go back maybe about eight years or so to 1987. Where there were a couple of noted things surrounding WrestleMania 3, including this one, which we've had a smaller drop of, pun slightly intended, because it's definitely good to the last drop. Macho Man Randy Savage, Sarasota, Florida. Come on in. You're going to be defending against the Dragon, Ricky Steen. But what's the cup for? WrestleMania 3, Pontiac, Michigan. Yeah, 90,000 plus people watching right there. And this is Ricky the Dragon Steamboat's cup of coffee in the big time. Yeah, cup of coffee in the big time because you'll never get closer than now. I am the Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion and I will remain the Intercontinental Heavyweight Champion. And George the Animal Steel... On the outside will be no factor, yeah. You say no factor. Obviously, he is a factor or you wouldn't even brought it up. Oh, wow. Mr. Sarcasm, yeah. I don't care if you've got 23 wrestlers around the outside and it doesn't even matter. No, because I am ready and I will not let this opportunity slip through my fingers. Cup of coffee, man, yeah. Man. Wow, man, freak out. <laughs> Freak out indeed. Again, calling him on his nonsense. Well, he, if he wasn't a factor, then you wouldn't have brought him up. Oh, Mr. Sarcasm, yeah. Well, uh, he unfortunately did let that uh, slip through his fingers, and at WrestleMania 3, it's not a spoiler, it's been over 30 years, he, uh, he lost the Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship to Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Oh, I was just about to get to that match, Fron. Darn you. Oh, please, you saw it with OSW Review ages ago. Yes, I know. Was... Yeah. Don't Wait fool it. the people. Wow. Breaking kayfabe. Again. It's what I do. Maybe it's... I'm going to break something else during the next commercial break. You never know. We should do a thing we'll called... We'll see about We that. should do a th compilation of follow-ups to bits and er, and drops. Just... No. That's... Okay. that. No. Well, two months later, about a... 
month and a half after WrestleMania 3, there was this exchange between Mean Gene and Macho Man. It's a day that I'm certain my guest at this time will not forget. I'm talking about the former Intercontinental Champion of the World, Macho Man nothing Randy. Nothing means nothing. Nothing, nothing. nothing means nothing. Man. Nothing means nothing. What do you mean by that? More. I'm talking about all the way to the top, yeah. Unjustifiably in a position that I'd rather not be in. But the cream will rise to the top. Oh, yeah. Macho Madness, yeah, has got more to offer than President Jack Tunney thinks that I got. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you something right now. Cards stacked against the Macho Man Randy Savage in WrestleMania 3. Yeah, let me say it. Yeah, let me say it out loud. And let me point to the president of the World Wrestling Federation. The Macho Man Randy Savage is not happy with your decision. Yeah. I am the cream and the World Wrestling Federation. Wait, wait a minute, and there is no doubt about it. Yeah, you mean Gene Okerlund. You know that I'm the cream of the crop. Well, wait, wait a minute, though, Randy. I've got to ask you very seriously. Do you blame Mr. Jack Tunney, the distinguished president of the World Wrestling Federation, for Ricky Steamboat being the Intercontinental Champion today? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Outside interference here. Yeah. In my moment of glory. Yeah, I know. I'm living in a nightmare. And I am the cream. And now... Not only the Intercontinental Heavyweight Championship belt must fall, but the World Heavyweight Championship belt. Because Hulk Hogan, yeah, I am the cream, yeah. The cream of the crop. And there is no one that does it better than the Macho Man Randy Savage. On balance, off balance, doesn't matter. I'm better than you are, yeah. And I'm talking to everyone in the World Wrestling Federation. And I'm even talking... President Jack Tunney, yeah, I'm on my way, and nothing is going to stop me. Nothing's going to stop me. You know, just out of curiosity, Randy, and I certainly don't want to diminish your tremendous uh, God-given talents, but, but I'm very curious. I haven't seen Elizabeth lately. Yeah, she's on the outside of the ring. Does she interfere in matches? Yeah. Nothing zero, yeah. Pure athlete, yeah. And I've been, uh, yeah, maligned from the top to the bottom. And because they can't handle the macho man Randy Savage, the cream of the crop, nobody does it better. Uh, Hardly I just, Carly Simon there with nobody does it better, but <laughs> can again may I uh, point out uh, more on Macho Man's part because uh, Dan Soder, one of my favorite comedians uh, when it comes to also wrestling mm-hmm. and his uh, amazing Macho Man and Andre the Giant impersonation, he pointed out he has such great uncle magic in this promo. I was just gonna say that. Yeah, because I said it in the back earlier, trying to steal my f- spot and now my bits too. That hey, I, I, know. That I, I borrowed he, from a friend, <laughs> technically. I don't, I don't think he wants to steal your bets. Uh, he's, he's seen the win-loss record on him, and it's uh, somewhere between Barry Horowitz and Iron Mike Sharp. You're proud of yourself. You're proud of yourself, Ron. That just hurts. Why do you have to be so hurtful? I don't, I just, I don't understand it. We're just trying to have a good time here, and... You just got to bring up, it's not about winning. It's all a work, brother. (laughs) Anyway. He's just, yeah, he is seething right now. Seething and sketching over there. I don't want to talk about it. Okay, fair, fair enough. He's over, overcome with emotion, as were a lot of people as on Vinnie, Twitter. As Vinny Jones would say, I'm getting emotional! Emotional. Yeah. So yeah, Ric Flair, who we heard from earlier, he, uh, he said, One of my closest friends since 1972 until this very sad day in 2019. Not only the greatest voice and personality in the history of announcing, but a man who touched everyone's life who were fortunate enough to know him. Rest in peace knowing no one will ever replace you. Woo. He, he didn't woo after that, but he probably would have if he was saying it, because that's usually how he does. Yeah. And good old JR, by God. He said, so sad today to hear the sudden passing of my dear friend Gene Okerlund. I just saw Mean Gene in North Carolina at WrestleCade. It's so true that our tomorrows are never guaranteed. Say hello to Jan, Mean Gene. Jan being Jim Ross's yeah, wife. Yeah, whom, I know. Well, for those who don't know, I'm, I'm sad. just because you know everything. You were looking at me. I'm sorry. I know. 
I, I, it's just very emotional. I'm sorry. I'm caught up in all of it. It's yeah, too J- many feels. Yeah, Jan is uh, Jim Ross's wife who uh, who passed away sometime in the last. Uh, it was about a year, year and a half ago. Yes. Uh, long time, yeah, long time wife of Jim Ross. So we're gonna brighten things up here a little bit as. We're at about that time. The place to be for the playoffs is the Broken Goblet Brewery, 1500 Grundy's Lane in Bristol, PA, where the Broken Goblet normally open until 5 on Sundays, but tomorrow they're staying open late so you can catch all of the action between the birds and the bears. And you can get some of that fresh... I don't remember it being that kind... that, that, That being the subject of the talk. The birds and the bears. Right. I'm gonna... I'm just gonna... I'm gonna... I'm gonna shut up. Chew your gum. <laughs> That's not professional on the air. Right. I'll turn off your mic and let you know. Uh, Please do. Anyway, you can get some of that fresh beer in tribute to the Eagles' No One Likes Us, We Don't Care to help root on some of that postseason magic from last year. Don't forget some of the other weekly features, including Sunday Bloody Marys and Bloody Flights, as well as brews from noon till 5. Tuesdays, you've got Jackbox.tv on the big screen, free to play from your cell phone. Wednesdays, Quizzo from the Dark Side with bartender Reese. Thursdays, you've got house musician Mike Estabrook, who has tunes and Estabingo. Can help you win chances at a quarterly jackpot. Fridays, a live music of variety acts, a variety of acts. And Saturdays, a hodgepodge of events. And, well, today, if you're looking for some delicious food, Dog and Bull's got you covered. And you don't even have to stand out in the rain to get it. Serving from 2 to 6 p.m. today, right in the brewery. Oh, just order from the bartender. You've got a platter of various food specials and a platter and pint, $15. The platter, 10 on its own, but they're featuring a nacho bar, penne alfredo, pulled chicken, also salad, and more. I've had it. It is delicious. And, yeah. I want it. I want it. I want it. It's like that Queen song, I want it all. Oh, you turned my mic off. Yeah, well, oh. I figured you were still chewing your gum. I should be. Yeah. But yes, you were saying it's like the Queen song, You Want It All. I gotcha. Yes, just a few reasons why it's always a good time at the Broken Goblet Brewery, 1500 Grundy's Lane in Bristol, PA. Broken Goblet Brewing, the semi-official brewery of Pro Wrestling Weekly. Please enjoy responsibly. Coming back, more on Mean Gene, and we'll get into some other news as well, and also some Facebook feedback. Yeah, we got that coming up as well here on Pro Wrestling Weekly on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. Chickies and Pete's, proud partner of the Philadelphia Eagles and your favorite local sports bar, has you covered this weekend for football playoffs. The Eagles showdown with the Bears. The home crowd will be at Chickies and Pete's for the definitive game-watching experience. Catch all the action like nowhere else and enjoy ice-cold draft and craft beer and all your Chickies food favorites. Chickies and Pete's, official caterer of the Philadelphia Eagles Touchdown Club. Click chickiesandpeets.com for locations and details. Seven out of ten parents in Pennsylvania don't secure their adult beverages, and that could open the door for a curious child to try them. Even if your alcohol is kept safely, is that the case at the friend's house hosting the sleepover? Find out what you need to know. Start the conversation to keep your child safe from underage drinking. Visit knowwhennowhow.org. Sponsored by the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board. We are advocates. We are defenders. We are champions. And friends. We are the Association of Zoos and Aquariums. 230 accredited members employing thousands. All dedicated to the care and conservation of Earth's precious wildlife. Sea turtles. African penguins. California condors. Cheetahs. And countless endangered species that are close to extinction. See for yourself at aza.org slash join us. Or at an AZA accredited zoo and aquarium today. Dion Square, located at South Oxford Valley Road and South Olds Boulevard, is a great place to shop and eat with the following businesses ready to serve you. The AutoZone, PA Wine and Spirits, CVS Pharmacy, The Hair Cuttery, Nationwide Insurance, Liberty Auto Tags, Smile Culture Dental, the First National Bank and Trust Company of Newtown, Lee's Hoagie House, and Pat Dion Beverages. So remember to make Dion Square your first stop for all of your shopping needs at South Oxford Valley Road and South Olds Boulevard in Fairless Hills. Pro Wrestling Weekly presents Today in Wrestling History, January 5th. 
On this date in 1996, ECW held its House Party 96 Supercard. In the main event, the Public Enemy defeated the Gangstas in a tag team match. On this date in 1998, WCW Monday Nitro aired live from Atlanta, Georgia. In the main event, Lex Luger defeated Randy Savage. On this date in 2004, WWE Monday Night Raw aired live from Memphis, Tennessee. In the main event, Batista and Ric Flair defeated the Dudley Boys to retain the World Tag Team Championship. On this date in 2009, WWE Monday Night Raw aired live from New Orleans, Louisiana. In the main event, John Cena and Shawn Michaels defeated Chris Jericho and Randy Orton in a tag team match. This has been Today in Wrestling History, January 5th. Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Weekly here on 1490 WBCB and online at WBCB1490.com. For Ron Derry alongside Mitch and Twitch and... Oh, what do you want? You want t- top no, or second no, billing? You want to be you want no, Twitch and Mitch? No, it's fine. Okay, I'm. I got it. I have to get used to change. Okay. Yeah, it's like that song from The Worst Witch. Growing up isn't easy. Yeah. So uh, there's that. Wow, nice dated reference from 33 years ago. <laughs> All right. So we today are celebrating the life and times of Mean Gene Okerlund, who passed away this past Wednesday. Some other tweets, including from Kevin Nash, saying, Last time I was with Gene, we were at a BTW show in Long Island late in November. He was my friend and has been for 26 years. I've never heard a person say anything negative about him. In our industry, that's unheard of. A true professional, but more important, a true gentleman. You will never be forgotten and sure as F never replaced. Goodbye, my friend, and thank you for making my life a better one once I met you. Uh, it's It really is... He's one up there with like two other people of people you'd never have a bad thing to say about, which would be Andre and Undertaker. Yeah, absolutely. Mean Gene. That's heck of a company to keep. Yeah. And then one more here from Stone Cold Steve Austin, who, when he was uh, stunning Steve Austin in WCW, had a little interaction with Mean Gene before uh, before Austin making the jump. To so just heard Mean Gene Okerlund has passed away as an interviewer, pitch man, announcer, or host, he was untouchable. Simply the best. Total professional with quick wit, sarcasm, humor, and that golden voice. Condolences to his friends and family. So, I mean, nothing but kind words all across the board. And also a few other noted laughs here, including this one from WrestleMania Six, going with Bobby the Brain Heenan. And, uh, again, just the two of them and the ability to play off of one another. This is after the... Baby face turn by Andre the Giant uh, going against Bobby Heenan and the family after the tag titles were lost. All right, Mean Gene Okerlund back with Bobby the Brain Heenan. Family members falling like the Berlin Wall. Bobby Heenan, I find that you're tougher to get along than a mother-in-law on a weekend visit to my house. Don't you concern yourself about getting along with me. I'm the easiest guy in the world to get along with. But when you're 540 pounds and you're seven feet four and it takes two and a half hours for the blood to reach the brain, you don't think real white, Wait right? Wait a minute, Bo- Bobby Eden, where do you have the bo- the nerve to hit Andre the Giant in the face? Well, I'll tell you where I got the, the nerve to hit Andre in the face. You take orders from me. I'm the head of the family. You listen to me, you go to the top. You don't listen to me. You're never heard from again. You have just committed, pal. What, are you lost for words for the first time? No, I'm not. You are. We've lost the championship because he stood on the apron, wouldn't get in the ring, wouldn't help Haku. Haku had to carry the load. You, Is he lazy? You Is he incompetent? Office. What? I'm through with him. Don't air up. I'm starting a new family. I'm bringing in new members, ones that will listen, All right. ones that will Let's care Let's go back me. to Jesse Ventura oh, no. and Gorilla Monsoon out on the... Arena area. Okay, maybe we're not going to do that, but uh, yeah, just the having the the nerve to uh, <laughs> yeah, t- Ted in the meanwhile t- t- <laughs> smile on Ted's face in the background. Uh, it's just been it very entertaining. It brings all of our days. It, it does, and then we've got one more here. This going back to 1986 with Bobby Heenan as well as Big John Studd and King Kong Bundy. All right, fans, on the heels of WrestleMania, the first thing I did, immediately hop on a blower and head down under, down to Australia. 
Tell me I didn't love that country. And did they love the World Wrestling Federation? Bobby Heenan, you can perhaps appreciate that. The reception of the World Wrestling Fe <laughs> what? what? What are you laughing about? Hmm? Or what? The I've got more serious things on my mind to concern myself with. Than what are you, you laughing about this hat? You look like the doorman at the plaza, and you're laughing at my hat. Yeah, you look like a boomerang salesman out of work. How do you like that? Tell me what I look like. I got thousand dollars worth of clothes on here. You're sitting here in a rented job from uh, Seymour's of uh, of uh, uh, Furland Heights, or something, whatever. And you got a three dollar hat on. You got from some. Uh, I'm 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 Wait a minute, King Kong Pundy. Big John Stud, gentlemen, come on in. Yeah, Sir, little man, I, you were out of the country. You went to Australia. I can see, you know, first time away from home, I bet you really cut loose. I bet you're having a good time, really making a fool out of yourself, making us Americans look bad. I know how you guys are when you go overseas. They, you are what is known as the ugly American. <clears throat> He's got a point there. Well, well, let's talk about something important. Let's talk like about something Hulk beautiful. Hulk Hogan, who's avoiding us. Andre the Giant, who we're looking under every rock, every stump, everywhere we go, we can't find him. How about Paul Orndorff, who has the $50,000 bounty on him, but he happens to avoid John Studd and King Kong Bundy. How about ever trying to find somebody to slam? I got to up it. You know, I'm going to put up $15,000 plus this gold necklace to anybody who can slam me. About 30 grand all That's gold, right, right? 30,000. Maybe they will bring some of the big boys out from behind the rocks they're hiding. Speaking of big boys, let's talk about King Kong you know, Bundy. Giant Studs talking about impossibility, slamming Bundy your stud, beating Bundy your stud, beating us singly, beating us as a team. It can't be done. You know, the man that put Hulk Hogan in the hospital, the man that beat Hulk Hogan, you know, I had him laying flat in the middle of the ring, and I go to the door, and what was it? Was that a regulation-sized door? Uh, no, you probably had the door well, cut down. Normal you couldn't have get through that thing. Well, King Kong Bunny, don't ever think I'm a normal person. You're a normal person. I'm not a normal person, but like I said, nothing's changed. It's all the same. We're going to get the world heavyweight title. Whether I get it, the giant stud gets it, it doesn't matter to us as long as we have it. And Hogan and Giant, you just keep running, just keep running. I right, thank you, and gentlemen. I got one Get's question up. to ask What's you. that? Was that hat a gift? Well, of course it was. It was a Obviously, gift. Obviously, nobody in their right mind would pay for something like that. Wait a minute. <laughs> this was a gift from the, from the Prime Minister of Australia, Prime Minister Hawks. And you sit there and you... Oh, my word. What? I can't... Well, wrap it up, little man. Thank you. I'll take care of the interview. Thank Just you, Don Just wrap it up Stein. like you said, right? King Kong Bundy. Uh, and thank you, we, uh, uh, we, Foster, we, Foster, Foster Brooks or Foster uh, Larger or somebody like that. Yeah. Yep, and wrap it up. We are just about ready to do, but I do have one other thing here. We teased it in the beginning of the show, that SummerSlam clip that had a little bit extra to it that uh, didn't quite make it there, of course, as the SummerSlam banner had dropped from 1989. So we've got a few seconds here. Here that is, and then we'll get into the wrapping it up here. Gentlemen, as you know, the ultimate warrior. Nice move. It's publicly stated that... Damn it, who put that up? Is that $200 an hour? That's it? Yeah. Oh, oh I that, wanted Tim to just go on uh, uh, well, a tirade. Well, there, there, there may be more to that. Who knows? They may have just stopped We're just going to wait another point. 10 years for the, for the tapes. For the rest of the tapes to come out. But It's like the Mel Gibson tapes. <laughs> just. Uh, yeah, that's a whole other story. Yeah. But we've got about a minute and a half, so we've got time for... Birthdays! That's my line. No, that's mine. All right, we don't have time for no, you two to... No, hold on. No. Hold on. No, no. All right, one plus four Brucey bonuses. On this date in 1970, Pamela Paulshock was born, the former fitness model who interviewed and did announcing for WCW in 2000 and unfortunately was the recipient of an awful dirty old man gimmick that was given to Okerlund by Vince Russo. <sighs> and she was also the Miss WCW Bikini Contest winner. She turns 49 today. And to the Brucey bonuses, things outside of the world of wrestling. On this date in 1944, Edward Gene Rendell was born, the former Philadelphia mayor and governor of Pennsylvania. He turned 75 today. On this date in 1948, Theodore William Lange was born, the actor, director, and screenwriter best known for his role as bartender Isaac Washington from the TV series The Love Boat. He's 71 today. On this date in 1969, Brian Hugh Warner was born. Who? The controversial and eccentric singer, songwriter, and actor better known as Marilyn Manson turns 50 today. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. And on this date in 1975, Bradley Charles Cooper was born, the highly acclaimed Philadelphia-based actor and filmmaker. An absolute dreamboat. Yeah. 
I'll take your word for it. It's currently starring and directing in the remake of A Star is Born. He turns 44 today. So there we have it. That's going to just about do it for us. We'll let these two bicker off the air as far as who's got what line. But until next Whose week. Whose line is it anyway? Play it out, Nutsy. One o'clock in all's whale. Serving you better than ever before. This is 14.